Hey, what's up, everybody? Monster show today. We have uh, Jess Curtis, Manny High School, a state championship winning coach, one of the, the best programs in Louisiana. I'm so stoked to have him on the show. We're going to bring him on. We're going to talk Tat Curtis. We're going to talk Wisconsin's culture. And we're going to talk, just pick his brain and get some, some football stuff out there. So really appreciate everyone tuning in, and we're excited to get started. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Thank you for making Locked On Badgers your first listen every day, your first stop for all your Wisconsin Badgers news and notes. As promised, we have a great guest. We're going to bring him in right now, uh, Coach Coach Curtis from Manny High School. Coach, how you doing, man? Doing good, man. Glad to be here. Uh, thank you so much for this. We really appreciate it. Um, I want to jump right in because I don't want to waste any of your time. And I know our listeners are here to hear you talk. You know, my goal is just get smart people on here and then get out of their way so we can all learn more about football. Um, let's talk about Tackett Curtis, first of all. Your, your nephew, you're also his head coach. Uh, he's somebody Wisconsin's been involved with a lot. We've talked about him on this show a lot. You know, four-star linebacker. I just kind of want to start off with besides the obvious athletic skills, right? I think anybody could turn on the film and see that he is just an athletic freak show in all the best ways what about Tackett um your nephew and, and obviously your linebacker is special what what makes him different well you know in today's age of seven on seven football what Tackett loves the most about the game is the physicality he loves the physicality of football uh you know we, we like to call him a throwback type uh in the sense that he loves the the physical nature of football and and uh you know and that's what makes him special and sets him apart he's a difference maker and a tone setter, so to speak. Uh, you know, he's had some of the some, some of the biggest hits that I've ever seen in my career coaching uh, the last couple of years. And uh, you know, so you know, the other thing about him, he's just such a tireless worker too, as well. You know, he's running track right now. We left him at track practice. Uh, what I've what I've told people, you know, his first few steps are so fast, so explosive, so quick, and everything he hits goes backwards. You know, and so those things right there just uh set him kind of apart in, in my opinion hey i wanted to touch on something and I, i'm curious to get your take on this wisconsin traditionally matches up really well in the trenches when they're good with just about anybody even ohio states where they've struggled at times is matching up in space and you mentioned like the seven on seven football in, in space is tack curtis the type of guy not just at wisconsin but at a school that can kind of help eliminate some of those offensive mismatches that have become really the norm Absolutely, you're right. That that's what football is in this in this day and age. Uh, you know, you got to be able to run in space, and so you know that's why again why he's running track right now that, to to continue to work on that and keep himself uh, good in that aspect. But that's what's cool about tackling as well is this big kid can run. You know, and in our defense, we'll we'll match him up man to man on running backs, and 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 he takes great pride in that. You know, state championship game, he's out there won the hundred meter finalist. Uh, state finalist on the uh and, and covered him man to man with no help zero coverage and you know when you can flip your hips and cover and then when you can patrol the box and and run through people like he can you know that transfers uh well to the next level especially to the big 10 where you know big 10 is a very physical conference a lot of running uh so he fits well in that box but yet when you play the alabamas the ohio states that like to spread it out he can also flip hips and run yeah, and one of the things I thought was really interesting and impressive, and again, you will know way more about this and have better uh, feel on this than I did, uh, but he doesn't seem to get caught up in any of the, the muck either. He really gets through blockers incredibly well. It's almost a natural instinct he has. Is that is something that you've seen as well? or? Absolutely, absolutely. And again, that's another thing that's just he's got a natural. He sets up his you know his angles well, and, and he's just like he's stalking his prey, you know, and, and uh, you know, it's just, it is. It's. It's. It, we, we. We try to coach kids to do that, but that's one of those things I kind of attribute to, kind of like a running back that has good field vision. You mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, some of these things are hard to teach. You just either got them or you don't. And he has such a great knack for for avoiding the trash. And he's he's blessed again with long arms. One of his best attributes. He's got length. So when people get on him, he's able to get them off him as well. That's going to serve him well as he moves permanently into the box. Hey, I wanted to ask you and just throw this out there. And I know where he's being recruited as a linebacker. Um, is it, am I crazy to think that he he could play like an in the box strong safety? Maybe not as much in today's football, but he, he could do that, right? Like I, I almost feel he's versatile enough to even play that role. 
Oh, absolutely. He's got like places like Stanford, up some places. He could go there. He could play safety. Tuckett can play a lot of positions in people's defenses, and that's what we've kind of, you know, as we've gotten further along in this, we've kind of, you know, kind of really been drawn to the places he's, he's gotten great relationships with, and then he starts looking at the scheme and seeing what, you know, what he really fits, what fits him well. He can play a lot of spots. It's really, you know, where's his highest ceiling, you know, and we feel like his highest ceiling is is uh, at linebacker. We feel like he can go there and, and really be a top-shelf Power 5 linebacker, and, and if he continues to grow at that level, who knows, maybe he could play uh, on the biggest stage. Where does he, in your opinion, have the most – put on your coaching head for a second – where does he have the most growth yet to come? Uh, you know – that's, that's the thing about Jack. He's constantly working on his game. Uh, you know, uh, he, he does a lot of things well. Like he, where he's at now, going into his senior year, really what he's working on now is becoming that voice of the team. You know, he's always had, even though he's a great player, one of our best players, he's always had seniors that were good and it was kind of kind of their team, you know. And, and now he's kind of – he's learning to be that uh, voice of, of, you know, the, the overall alpha dog leadership type deal. And that's going to bode well for him if he becomes, you know, that linebacker within that 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 box. Yeah, for sure, for sure. What when you when you watch him play, and you know, just watching the film of him, it, it's so much fun because he's on special teams, he's playing quarterback, he's playing on defense. And I've always thought kids that just play all over the field, they just clearly give a crap, right? What does winning mean to Tackett Curtis? Like, where where is his desire? Is that his his motivation? Absolutely. Kid loves the game of football. Hey, you know, he loves he loves the game of football, not for all the flash, but he again, he loves what what football is about. You know, uh, all the diversity, all the all the physicality, all the four quarters of football against a good opponent as good as you, you know, uh, find a way to play one more play. You know, down here in Louisiana, it, it's hotter than the devil's armpit, you know, here in uh, August and September. And so getting him to play both ways was really not out of it you know, need. It was just, we were crazy to have a player that good on the sideline. So, you know, he played, he played both ways and just him willing himself through some of those early games, you know, uh, the, the first game of the year, man, I, I don't even think he knew his name at the end of the, of the night, you know, because he, he re- returned punts, uh, played quarterback, uh, you know, played defense and, uh, you know, he's just one of those. He wants to win. He leaves it all on the field. He loves the game. He loves where he's at right now. He can't wait for his, for his opportunities down the road, but you know, it, that's part of his deal. He wants to get this thing done as far as picking his college by July, hopefully after he takes his officials in June. You know, he wants to put that kind of behind him, be excited about it, but yet get ready to invest himself into his senior campaign and try to win a uh, championship. The kid's played in three he's, – he's played in three state championships in his three years. He wants to be one of the only teams that's gone four years – his four years in high school to the state championship – we play it in the Superdome in New Orleans, uh, and he wants to go out a winner. So that's just kind of a snapshot of him uh, and, and what he wants to do. That's incredible. And I want I want to touch on that in our next segment. we got to jump to one of our sponsors quick, but I really want to talk about the culture you've built at Manny and how that transitions players into playing at the next level. So we're going to jump into that next, guys. I'll continue this awesome conversation with Coach Curtis. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is, again, one of our favorite, favorite, go-to health tools on this show, something that you can always throw in the backpack, get ready to go to the gym, eat it. It's 100% pure chocolate. All Built Bars have 17 or more grams of protein. Um, it's not going to weigh you down like a candy bar. It's not something that that keeps you from achieving your potential, right? If you want to look like Tat Curtis, you got to get your nutrition right. You got to go to Built Bar, get the variety pack. I just bought one today. It comes in 12 different flavors. Um, it's something that you're not going to feel guilty about eating. And the flavors are phenomenal. Low calorie, high protein, and you're going to replace your candy bars with these. They taste just as good, and they're infinitely better for you. Um, at Bill Bar, again, they're all about the taste. What they've done is they found something delicious, and then they've made it healthy. Again, all of our goals here should be looking a little more like Tat Curtis, getting in the gym and eating right to get our bodies to the, the spot they need to be for us to feel good and perform really well with wherever we're at in life. So uh, at Locked On, if you go to Bill.com, use promo code LOCK15. And you get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your order. And now let's jump right back into this. Um, again, I've got Coach Curtis, Manny High School. Coach, I, I really want to jump on something you had just mentioned, culture. And you have built – Manny High School is a powerhouse. And I want to talk to you about is is 
recruiting kids from winning high school is something that coaches or colleges maybe overlook a little bit where you don't have to coach culture into a kid. They come in as a winner. Well, you know, I think that's a, a big plus. And, you know, talking to coaches, especially with today's transfer portal, uh, you know, you, you got to be careful what you're buying and what you're purchasing because they won't be there. Uh, you know, so I think culture has to has to be involved when you get when you can get a kid from a winning program uh, that's used to being dependent on being there, being at workouts, being on time, doing the right things in school. I think it's uh, it's a lot easier to pull a trigger on that type of kid, especially if he can, if, especially if he can play the game well. Yeah, and I, I'm curious. And you're taking this. I heard a coach say something once at a clinic. He said, "I can either coach your effort, or I can coach your your technique or your scheme, right?" And with a guy like Tech, he's going to come in having been in that program you've built and the type of kid he is. You're not going to have to coach culture with him. No, I mean they're going to do the right things. They're going to be on time. That they're going to be yes or no sir kids. They're they're going to love the weight room, and you know understand a lot of these kids nowadays are just in love with being recruited, and and a lot of colleges get burned with those type kids. Uh, you know, uh, what you're going to get with Tack, it's a kid that loves football. I mean, that's that's sometimes I kind of wish he'd find a hobby or two to go with it. But uh, he, he loves football and everything he does is, is about that. And so, uh, you know, that that's kind of I think one of the reasons, too, that he's kind of blown up as well. You know, of all the things we've talked about. But when you're talking about really being in a coaching family, his dad was a was an old defensive coordinator uh, and now as a principal. And then his uncle is, is a head coach. So the kid's coming from a football family. He knows what it takes. And, and uh, so I, they, they feel like they're going to get a product that they're not going to have to really if he's in class and getting them. It's going to be ready to rock and roll when he gets to uh, the college he's going. And I want to tie that into uh, Wisconsin's culture because Wisconsin is not what you would call a traditional blue blood with the Ohio States, the Alabamas, the Georgias, Clemsons, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of schools where, where Tackett has interest from. I mean, Tackett can basically go where he wants to. Um, but Wisconsin is a program that's always been lauded for its culture, you know, a football first place. What is the culture? when? Because you guys all went up to Madison. You've been there. What is that culture like for you guys? Unbelievable, because that's the thing, really, why we sent the film to Wisconsin. And it was hard. It was hard to get the film there. I mean, you know, Wisconsin doesn't come down south very much. Culture and what they're about uh, kind of mirrors what Tackett's about. And so I was very lucky that Coach Billy Lewis works with the player personnel department now. He was able to get the film to Coach April, and Coach April immediately gave me a call and, and, and told us that uh, he wanted to start the relationship. And they've been on him for about a year, and they've done a wonderful job. I think that's really interesting. So you guys actually kind of targeted Wisconsin. I'm sure Wisconsin's not the only school you targeted, but you you guys kind of reached out first. I didn't actually know that. Uh, what was that first Absol call back from Coach April like? Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's the thing. I mean, again. I just know Tackett, know that he's not about all – some of these locker rooms are toxic around the, around the country, and that's just the truth. Uh, and, and and so we were looking for a great culture, a great fit, great scheme fit, and, and, and Wisconsin's immediately going to come to mind when you think about that. Uh, look at their start this year, to have a bad start and stay together, not point mm -hmm. fingers and come up, you know, one of the top defenses in the, in the country, number one. You know, that's, that's culture right there. And uh, – that's the reason we targeted them, and, and I was lucky because, again, it's hard to get that film to Wisconsin. Don't have a lot of connections with Wisconsin, and, and they don't come to Louisiana typically. If a kid's good enough to go to LSU, usually they don't come in after them. And, uh, and in this case, we kind of convinced them that, uh, you know, hey, we, we, we really like their culture and we're very interested. Uh, and, and Coach April loved what he saw on film, and it went from there. Coach April has been very aggressive. He came to us three times last year he came and watched uh, a regular season game he came to our semifinal game he flew the next week to the state championship in the superdome in new orleans and so he's been very aggressive uh he's come twice during the off season one time bringing coach uh chris one time bringing jim leonard they've been very aggressive we've appreciated that they've been great to my family and uh you know it's been great well and part of that's just in again you you would know this far better than I would, but you, you establish relationships that are based on um, that respect and, and how you treat people. Because your, your program, you know, you have a, another defensive back coming up, an offensive lineman coming up. Not that, you know, it's just that relationship with colleges, you know, it's important in recruiting. 
Absolutely. And, and again, they start to see what we're about. You know, Coach April just being around our program. And, and now, you know, they're interested in our other kids. They just see that they're going to be ready. Uh, they're going to be Wisconsin-type kids. And, you know, it just it, – it's been great. And, and we're so excited. They're, they're, you know, he's going to come down twice here in these next couple of weeks. And, and, and we appreciate that. And that's why – they're one attack. It's you know finalist. That's why he's going to take an official back to Wisconsin. I think it's going to be heck his his third or fourth time there. And uh, you know, so it's been good. And that's really what tack it's about. Every kid's different. Some kids are chasing NIL. Some kids are chasing the condo they're going to live in or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, tack it's really about you know that culture, the relationship with coaches, and then probably in the end scheme and all that's going to come and really be heavily involved as well. I, I kind of want to just ask one more follow up on on the culture and you guys reaching out first. How did you how did you initially kind of gain an awareness of the Wisconsin culture? I mean, obviously their defense has been really good for a while, but it seems like you had a, a deeper idea of what they're about from a football. Absolutely, standpoint. because I'm gonna tell you what I am. I'm a, I'm a football junkie. I mean, I, we we love football, and if we know everything about everybody. That's that's what I'm kind of like tacking. I need to get another hobby besides just football, <laughs> and so we know everything about Wisconsin and what they were about and. And, and, and what their culture is about and and then finally getting to meet the coaches it, it's exactly what i thought it would be you know but it, it was hard getting them I, I actually got it through sending it to coach lewis's twitter dm because you know again wisconsin does not come to this area they you know they just really just try to stay in that midwestern region and and, and very rarely come down to the south and so we pursued them and and once they really saw that we were we were uh, you know, very interested. They they returned it, and, and the thing is, Coach April is a Louisiana guy. People, a lot of people don't know that. You know, he's from Chalmette down there in, in, in southern Louisiana, and uh, you know, she when he's when he's off, he's usually coming down to see his dad down in South Louisiana. So, you know, I think it was kind of cool for him to see a Louisiana kid that had some interest in him to see this kid that was physical and a Wisconsin type linebacker. Uh, he was very intrigued. And I'm just going to tell you, I don't, I don't think the Wisconsin fans really understand what they have in coach April. I mean, to me, he's one of the better coaches out there. He's, he's, he's tremendous. Uh, but how he's recruited Tackett and, and just, uh, what he's about, he's really, really, really been awesome for us. And we, I tell you, we had an interview, not to get this off topic, but with a walk, potential walk-on linebacker from Washington last cycle. And same thing, he, even as a walk-on, he said, Coach April treated me like like gold. Just everything we've heard about April, he's just a tremendous person on top of being a great and, coach. And I'll tell you another thing about Wisconsin. A lot of people understand, but, you, you know, they develop their players so well as well. You know, they do such a great job developing their players. You know, they're, they're blessed to have coaches like Coach April. They, they go and get Coach Sheridan, I mean, to be inside linebacker, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and then, and then Jim Leonard. I mean, to have Jim Leonard, you know, that's an NFL-type d- D.C. sitting there running your defense that has a true love for Wisconsin, uh, being a former walk-on himself. And just how they develop their players is is impressive. You know, it's, it's, it's refreshing uh, to kind of see how some of these other programs uh, run their program. And then you go and visit Wisconsin and just see a, a whole different approach. And there's, there's many ways to run your program. There's, everybody's successful doing it different ways. But, you know, Wisconsin just has their way. They look for certain kind of kids, tough kids that will fit their culture. And, and, and uh, you know, they win. And they're going to win this year. And they're going to win the next year just mm-hmm. because of the way, they're, just the way they're built. Hey, does the – and talking about player development, does the pipeline at linebacker that Wisconsin has – how much has that played into finding a potential landing spot for Tackett? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if, if you're a linebacker and you're not looking at Wisconsin, you're crazy. You know, I mean, just, again, have guys like Sharon and April coaching you and then the D.C. being Jim Leonard. I mean, uh, shoot, man, you, you're crazy if you're not looking at them. And also, as far as running backs and O-linemen, I mean, those are those are hotbed spots. Uh, you won't find any better places to get coached up than Wisconsin for those positions. Hey, quick question. I'm not, not going to ask for – certainly not going to ask for any other college names, but – when you said there were some schools you targeted, Wisconsin being one of them, I mean, do you have a rough idea of how many schools you kind of sat down and said, I would really like to reach out with Tackett to these schools? Is there like a rough number? Was it a ton, a few? Well, you know, it started off probably being about 10 to a dozen schools that we thought that we wanted to look at and kind of 
you know, really, really look back and see if there was interest from them and because we just liked the way they were run, you know. And then as this thing is gone, it's kind of been a two-way street. You kind of look at, okay, people that we like and then who really, really loves us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. A lot of people like you. Some people love you. And, and you know, and, then, and and you make these relationships, and that's kind of where it's gone, you know. And, and then now you're kind of finding the guys that you have a tremendous relationship with. You know, and then you're kind of just looking at the fit and and and, and looking how, how you fit uh, scheme and things like that. And so, uh, you know, that's kind of where we're at now. And, uh, you know, he set uh, three official visits. He may just go to those three. He may add a couple more uh, to make his five, or he may stay at that three. But, you know, he's got three right now. He's set locked in. He's really high on those. They're really high on him. And, uh, you know, he's ready to take it to the next level. And they're just tremendous options out there for him. Um, so, Coach, I have one more segment I'm going to try to hold on to you for, and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the time. So um, we're going to jump into one more of our show sponsors, and we're going to get back with Coach Curtis. Um, again, one of the favorite favorite sponsors that we have on the show uh, remains Bet Online as well. Bet Online is your number one source for all your sports gambling wagering needs. Uh, college basketball is over, but obviously the NBA is here, the NFL is here. We've been really big on some of the NFL futures. If you think you're, Trey Lance is the the answer at quarterback for the 49ers, you can get on them early to win the NFC. Of course, with this new Debo news, maybe they're trading him. Who knows? Um, and then you get into the basketball playoffs. You know, there's been a ton of injuries. Middleton went down. Booker went down. You know, maybe now's the time if you think uh, Booker will come back, you can get the Suns at a discount if you think they're the favorite. So Bet Online is your number one source for all your sports uh, betting needs, podcast reviews, it has a bunch of sports news as well. If you're just there to get some information on what's going on, where the latest coach is headed, um, all of that is there on Bet Online. Easy to use website. They've been around for a long time. They've established a community. Go to Bet Online, go to the website with your mobile device, learn more about the trends and actions. Uh, Bet Online, where the game starts. And again, we're continuing our discussion with Coach Curtis. Um, and before we even get into this next topic, I just, again, want to thank you so much, Coach, for, for spending your time here. The goal is just to get smart people on the show and talk football, and you're definitely in that category. So thank you again so much. All right. Um, yeah, I want to I wanna talk about I, – I was listening to an interview you did a while ago. This might have been a year or two ago, and you were talking about ball control offense and maybe as a way to really impose your will. Um, I kind of want to get into offense. offenses, and we've talked about this a little bit already, have shifted so far into a direction of basketball on grass, right, spreading it out. Is there now an advantage for a school like Wisconsin that puts, you know, seven offensive linemen on the field, you know, a fullback or running back and just – plays eight minute drives nine minute drives is that almost a way to take advantage of, of being different now yeah and, that, and that's exactly what we do you know we just try we have an offense that i mean i think my oc moonlights and comes and calls and, and comes and calls some of y'all's games sometimes <laughs> they like possession and be physical and it's just what we are it's kind of a different approach it's fresh and and people I mean, if you don't line up right, if you're not, if you don't match, I embarrass you. And and so, uh, in a land of spread, it makes us different and unique. Uh, if you can win the time of possession and play great defense with it, you're going to win a lot of ball games. And that's exactly what Wisconsin does. What we do. Hey, is there? I want I think sometimes people get. I don't want to say bored with consistency. Um, but Wisconsin has been a tremendously consistent program. You've built a consistent program. How difficult is it to just maintain winning year after year after year? Is that something fans take for granted? I think you. I think they do. They 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 most certainly do. Where I'm from, I think that's you know, uh, heck, um, you look at some of these programs that you know Alabama doesn't win the national championship. It's a horrible year for them. It's the same way in our in our. I think I'm losing you, Coach. Oh, hello. I guess I think we have some technical difficulties. I think we're losing Coach here. Um, Let me see if I can bring him back in. Hey, Coach, you still there? All right, so I think we're we might have to cut this one short with uh with Coach Curtis. Uh, We're losing him. I'm going to send him a quick message. Um, but 
what a tremendous guest. Just an absolute phenomenal guest. Coach Curtis coming in, Manny High School. Um, obviously, oh, Coach, you still there? Nope. Okay. So Coach Curtis coming in, Manny High School, the uncle of um, Tackett Curtis, Wisconsin, has been recruiting him extremely hard. And it's just, this is a guy, again, who Wisconsin has a real shot here. Wisconsin has a real shot at landing uh, just an elite, elite player. And as, as you heard on the interview, this is a guy who Wisconsin's in that final group. He can play wherever he wants. Um, and it's definitely somebody that uh, can be a difference maker in this defense. Long, athletic, fast, physical. Um, and Wisconsin's getting you know one of those three visits that, that Jess Curtis talked about. So definitely more to follow on this, guys. Um, thank you again. I'm sorry this last part of the interview cut out. I think we lost uh, Coach on the road a little bit, but still very, very, very grateful for all the time. Um, he was a tremendous guest. Uh, I hope to have him again on the show to pick his brain a little bit more, especially as this recruitment, maybe even hopefully after this recruitment, if it does turn out in Wisconsin's favor. Um, love to have him back on the show to discuss that a little bit more. Uh, thank you guys again for listening to Lockdown Badgers, uh, for making it your first listen every day. A bunch of new content coming down the bike. We still have uh, some really interesting interviews and guests coming. We have Dylan Graff coming again. Um, Justin Julka coming back on board. We do have an interview coming up with uh, John Blackwell, the, the basketball commit. So lots of stuff to look out for. Um, appreciate everyone who's listened, everyone who's subscribed, everyone who's left a comment. Today's uh, guest again was, was Coach Curtis from Manny High School. Uh, tremendously successful and smart guy. Um, it's a shame our interview uh, we lost at the end, but still tons of good insight and really grateful that he was able to come on board. Um, thank you guys for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every day. Make Lockdown NFL Draft your second listen. Uh, Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, guys.